Hey, what's up everyone? My name is Jason Turley and in today's video, I'm going to show you how to crack password protected zip files on Windows. So you see here on my desktop, I have two zip files. I can click on them and it shows me what's in there. Uh, paperwork.txt and taxinfo.txt. But if I try to open either one of these by double clicking, it prompts me to enter a password. Let's just do password one, two, three. That's not correct. I can try to extract it somewhere. But again, it asks me for the password, which I don't have. So cancel. And it creates this empty folder. So that's not helpful. And same for pictures.zip. Double click. I can't open anything. They're password protected. Cancel, cancel. All right, so there's the problem. What is the solution? Instead of just endlessly guessing passwords, we can use a password cracking tool. Let me open one here, such as John the Ripper. So search John the Ripper on DuckDuckGo and click on the first result from openwall.com. John the Ripper is an open source password security auditing and password recovery tool for many operating systems. We're going to be using John the Ripper Jumbo, but they also have a pro version, a paid version for Linux, Mac, Windows, and even Android phones, which is really neat. You can get some swag here, some t-shirts, but we're going to scroll down here, download the latest John the Ripper Jumbo release. I'm on Windows 64-bit operating system. If you're not sure if you're 64-bit or 32-bit, you're likely 64-bit, but you can search quickly by typing in system info. Click on that. And it'll bring up this system summary. And we see here that I am x64 based. If you have the 7-zip utility installed, click on this first link. If not, if you just have regular zip, which is the default, install this. We see that the seven zipped one is much smaller. So click here. It's gonna ask you where you wanna download it. Let's just put it on our desktop, save, and it's downloading. Let's right click, seven zip, extract here. That's going to do its thing. We see this new folder popped up here. John, then the version number 1.9.0. I don't need this anymore. I can delete that 7-zip archive. Double click on this. And the folder pops up. There's a readme file. We can right click, edit with Notepad++, or just regular Notepad. And you can read up all about the tool here. It shows you how to install it and how to use it. But I'm also going to be going over that today. So minimize that. A neat thing I love about John the Ripper and OpenWall and everyone who's contributed to this amazing tool is the documentation. So click on Doc. Let me make this a little bit bigger. There's documentation for pretty much everything you would want to do. And they have individual readme files for the different kinds of format you want to crack. So we want to crack zip files. So I'm going to scroll all the way to the bottom. And right here we see readmezip.txt. Let's open that up. And it tells us exactly how to do it in Windows. So run zip to john on the password protected zip files. And then redirect the output, that's what the skater means, to a file called hash. And then simply run john on whatever that output is. So let's do that. If we want to confirm, we can go to run, scroll down, we see john.exe, that's the actual password cracking tool. And then down here, we see zip to john. Convert the zip file format to something that john can read and understand. So to do that, let me open up command prompt, cmd, click there. It puts me in my user directory. Let's cd into desktop slash john slash run 
Or if that's too confusing, you can just CD and click here, copy, and paste it in. And we're in the same directory. I can do a DIR and showcase everything that we have here. So zip to John. Let me make this a little bit bigger. And I want to go up two directories to my documents. Let's just hit enter. And it prints out some information. It says version 2.0, my documents.zip paperwork.txt and taxinfo.txt. Those are the two files that we saw earlier. Some more information about them. And then this is what we care about here. This is the unique hash right here. This pkzip dollar sign. That's what we're going to feed to John. So hit the up arrow. Greater than sign. Let's just call this hash one. But we don't want to put it there. We want to put it on our desktop hash one. We see it prints here. We double click. Open it in notepad plus plus or regular notepad doesn't matter. And there it is. That's what we're going to feed to John to crack it. Now simply let's clear the screen CLS. John. And then I believe I can just drag this and paste it here. There we go. Smash the enter key. It's loading. It's running. You can ignore these warnings. They don't really matter. And here it is, Pokemon. How did it know that? How did it figure that out? Well, when you run John with no arguments, just John and then the name of the hash file, it'll first try your username and then your full name and then the name of your home directory. And if none of that works, it's gonna go into word list mode. We can see right here, proceeding with word list password.lst, rules word list. So John comes with the built-in word list that it will use to crack the passwords. We'll get into more about word lists in just a second, but let's make sure this password actually works, Pokemon. So let's click here, extract all, Yes, that's fine. Pokemon. All right, open up paperwork.txt. There we go. Generic paperwork file. It looks good to me. Open up tax info. Like and subscribe. Please do that. Bang, bang. All right, so that's this one. I can delete that zip file now. Don't really care about it. Let's do the same thing for pictures.zip. So zip to John. Let me just drag this, paste it in here. Unzip this. We see it's a lot more text this time. Probably because they're pictures. They're not just flat text files that only have like three words in them. So this is huge. Clear screen. Let's redirect that. Let's just call it hash two. Let's open up hash two just to confirm. Yep, pictures.zip, that's the name of it. And we see all that good hashing info. And at the very end, we see the two files, computer fire and keyboard warrior, looks good to me. Let's run John again on hash two, hit enter. We see here word list, or uh, we see here proceeding with a single. That's what I said earlier. It's going to try the username, your full name, and then your home directory. Next up, it's going to try password.list, which is its built in password list. It didn't find anything. So next, it's going to try incremental ASCII, meaning it's going to try, let me open up Notepad. It's going to try something like this A A A A A A A A A B. A, 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 C, and then just so on and so forth throughout the entire alphabet until it guesses it, right? So then it cycles through, it'll do like B, A, 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 and so on and so forth. So this will take forever. This might never finish running. So I'm hit Control and C 
my keyboard to kill it, to stop it, is I have a better technique. Let's go back to a web browser. And this time we're going to look for something called sec lists. Sec lists site github.com. Again, we want the first result. Seclist is a security tester's companion. It's a collection of multiple types of lists, user and security assessments collected in one place. List types include usernames, passwords, URLs, sensitive data patterns, fuzzing payloads, web shells, and many, many more. Ooh, so that's a lot. So we can look through here. This is a website called GitHub for uploading and sharing code. Completely free to use, super awesome tool. So we see these different folders and then these different files. Down here is the readme. You can read up more about it, how to install it from the command line, but we're not gonna worry about that. We're gonna go to usernames, uh, forgive me. We're gonna go to passwords, click there, because we wanna guess the password. And these are the results of numerous common passwords, passwords found in data breaches, passwords found on the dark web. We see here dark web 2017 top 10, we can click on that. And these are the top 10 passwords in 2017 that people had. One, two, three, four, five, six, password, QWERTY, ABC123. Even though this was 2017, I guarantee there's a lot of people who still use these passwords. We can go back. Yeah, we can, we can pick whatever. Some are more popular than others, right? We can do Zadonet 10 million top 1000. I think these are kind of just fun to look through. So if you ever have some free time, you can see some common passwords. We see monkey, we see let me in. Uh, I can't read that one on YouTube or that one either. <laughs> we see killer and trust no one, Jordan. This is just blank. So we could use that. However, I know for a fact, the person who made this password protected zip file really likes the weather. They really like the seasons in particular. So I'm going to use seasons.txt. Click here. And we see it's just the different seasons of the year in leet speak. So instead of spring, S-P-R-I-N-G, there's a dollar sign for the S and there's a one for the I. And it just goes on and on. We see there's over 5,000 lines for spring and summer and winter and fall. And they add special characters on the end. They do capitalization. So we're going to use this. So you can download this file a few ways. We can use PowerShell, invoke web request, and get it that way. Or we can just do raw. So raw will show just the file with no like pretty formatting. We can do control A, copy it, open up notepad, paste it in, save it. Let's plot this on our desktop seasons.txt. Now we're here, we're back in John the Ripper. Let's do John tac tac word list. Before I do that, let's do tac h for help. I should have done this earlier, so forgive me. We see tac tac word list, word list mode, read words from a file or from standard input. And then there's a lot more options. If you know the format of the hash, you could specify that here. I'm going to clear the screen, CLS, John, tac tac, port list equals this, and we want to crack this hash. Smash the enter key, and wow, in less than a second, we see done in zero seconds. That was incredibly fast. Summer 2022 pound. So we can grab that, right click to copy it open up pictures, extract, yep, right there, and paste in the password. And then we get computer fire and the keyboard warrior. Bonus points if you can tell what videos I use these photos in. <laughs> so there you have it. Those are two ways to use John the Ripper which is a very, very powerful password cracking tool. You can use it not just for zip files, you can use it for hashes, you could use it on Linux, you can use it on Mac. System passwords, 
database passwords, but in my case, I used uh, the zip file. So we use zip to John to convert it. John will use its single mode. It'll use its built-in word list. And if it doesn't get that, it'll try incremental, which is brute force, guess everything under the sun. That will take all day. So that's not really good for using on your home computer. That would be great on like a cluster or on like a server that has a bunch of unlimited resources. That didn't work for the second one. So we used our own word list from Seclist by Daniel Meisler. So I encourage you guys to go to Seclist on their GitHub, just look around and see what you can find. You know, there's tons of passwords, there's tons of default logins, there's things for fuzzing, there's things for common usernames, common payloads. It's a really, really amazing tool. That's why it's widely used in the security community and that's why it has so many stars and so many contributors to it. That'll do it for this video, guys. Remember to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know if you found this useful, if you want to see more content like this in the future, take it easy and have yourself a good one.